Today we will look over the upfront controller radio functions. For this tutorial you will need COM1 and COM2 from the HOTAS section in your controls bound. You may also wish to have the generic communications button bound as well. Please note that the default keybinds do not work for me, I believe this to be an issue with my regional keyboard. So make sure yours works and rebind them if you have to. Starting on the radio sets themselves, you have two radios, COM1 and COM2. On either side of your upfront controller, you have a knob for each radio. Radio 1 on the left, radio 2 on the right. Pulling this knob will show the radio's current options and frequency. Rotating the knob will cycle up and down the radio channel selection. After a while, the displays time out and the information will hide. Pulling the knob again will show the details once more. Above that, we have the volume controls for both radios, and on the top right, the brightness for the display itself. Let's go over the available channels for the radio. G. This shows the guard frequency, a channel you can listen in on, whilst you've got other channels selected. M. Manual. This allows you to manually enter a frequency to communicate on. C. This tunes to the Q frequency, which is a single channel frequency for, I believe, communication outside the current network. Owing to a lack of information, I will not cover this. S. This is for the maritime channel selection. I do not believe this has a function at the moment, but it allows you to choose from a number of preset maritime codes for communication with ships and coastal stations by entering the number and pressing enter. There are also a number of preset channels, pre-configured in the editor before emission. With an active radio channel selected, on the right hand side we have a number of push buttons. GRCV, when pushed, the guard receiver is enabled, allowing you to hear transmissions on the guard frequency. Squelch, SQCH, reduces radio background noise at the expense of potentially filtering out weak transmissions. CPHR, Cipher. Successive depressions of this button will cycle between plain voice and cipher diphase mode or encryption. This is not simulated. AM and FM. As you might imagine, these toggle which frequency you have selected. A colon before the function indicates if it is active or selected. You can manually configure your frequency on the M manual selection. Select the manual channel, or M, on either COM1 or COM2, type in the frequency you need and push enter. You can then listen to the radio communications on that frequency, but also transmit by pushing the correct radio button on the front for COM1 or COM2. If you are using the simple radio mod, you can now communicate with players on the selected frequency. If you're using the in-game radio in full complexity, you will have to manually select the radio you need to communicate with ATC or AI aircraft. You can usually find information on frequencies in the mission brief. Once you've found the frequency, set your radio to the frequency you wish to communicate on, push the comm switch on the throttle for that radio, and then select the options via the F keys or the mouse. Texaco, in field, one, one, request rejoin. And now we will retune COM2 to the AWACS, again in the exact same process. If a mission maker has provided in-game transmission beacons, you can also tune in and listen to them with the radio. Next up we have the ADF, the Automatic Direction Finder. ADF provides you a bearing to a radio station. To use the system, Tune one of your radios to the ADF beacon frequency found in the mission brief. 
and use the switch on the top left to select either COM1 or COM2 as the ADF source. Note that putting the volume down to zero will not provide a bearing. Once tuned, you should be able to hear a tone or sounds as set by the mission maker. This provides a steering cue on the HSI toward the radio source, shown as a small circle on the edge of the compass. It will not provide any range information, only direction. When making a turn towards it, memorise the heading and make a single turn directly to that heading. Do not follow the marker as the marker will drift as the aircraft is turning. Bear in mind that depending on the power of the radio transmitter, you can lose signal if you fly too far away from the radio source. A common use for this is to locate distress beacons in a combat search and rescue mission. Being work in progress, at present the radio appears a little bit off, sometimes it will reject frequencies for no obvious reason. Attempting repeatedly to enter the frequency will sometimes allow you to enter it properly. Additionally, trying the AM or FM options and re-entering your frequency might help. Hopefully we will see an improvement in the system in the near future. So that's a quick look at how the radio works in the Hornet.